Oh, no, no. No. What's up, guys? It is your favorite. I'm Corny Gaming, back to bring you content that you never asked for. So I don't know if you can read the title or not, but it does say we're going to play with a single shot shotgun. So that is exactly what I'm doing in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. After being allowed to be employed by good old Doc Mitchell, he resurrected me from the grave. And he promptly gave me the name, one I Randy. Now, I had to choose this name because I couldn't think of anything that would better suit a monster. And the monster I designed is a ginger that is freakishly strong, intelligent, and surprisingly fast. So with all of that out of the way, that's better for my shotgun because I can do more damage and I can reload faster. Chose was Trigger Discipline and Wild Wasteland. Trigger Discipline was better because I only have one bullet, so what's the point of firing slower in Wild Wasteland? Because it's not a proper follow-up playthrough without it. Uh, I then got rid of Joe Cobb because he sucks, and I didn't even get the finishing blow, so I didn't get his XP. I was able to make my way out of Good Springs. I found this little valley that I thought did not have anything bad in it, but boy was I wrong, because it was full of Cazadors. After being harassed, abused, I made myself out, and I went all the way to Camp McCarran, where I was employed to be a lawnmower for Vault 22. After talking to that guy, I got to meet Colonel James Shue. This guy was able to employ me into the NCR as some sort of, like, I don't know, agent. But I was first tasked to clear up Prim, and I gave it to NCR so they can have their own little democracy town. Then I found a stalker named Malcolm Holmes, and I did what any rational person would do to their stalker. I put him down and took his chain, and then I forgot about these caps that were all around his neck. Just watch what happened. That I got stuff. And then I forgot. Uh, I wanted to get some more XP because I was pretty underleveled. So I cleared out Nipton of both the Powder Gangers and the Legion. But the Legion, I, I did not expect them to be this strong. But then again, I didn't have the strongest ammo. I was using 30 out buck instead of slugs, which is better for taking out people. But after that, I was then tasked to go find a ranger in this vault. I think it was Vault 21. Uh, I was able to clear out the fiends, and I got rid of Motor Runner. Then, Ambassador Crocker pulled up and told me I had to do something for the boomers, so I did that. But I was halted by a guy named George, and since he wanted to bet my life against the bombs, I put him down and took his money. I found this old bag named Pearl. This old lady was kind of mean, and she kept calling me savage for being an outsider. Not savage in a good way. Like, you tell your boy after he pulled a sick 360 no-scope on some poor loser in Call of Duty. No, she just kept calling me savage because I was an outsider. Since I was deemed an outsider, I had to work my way up through the chain of trust, and then she finally enlisted herself as an NCR member. After that, I was able to talk to the literal nerd emoji Ambassador Crocker about joining Freeside, or at least not joining them, but enlisting them into the NCR so they can stop harassing citizens, I guess. So after that, uh, I walked away, did some stuff for him again. After about an hour or two, we finally solved the problem, and Elvis gave me his dog, which was friggin' awesome. I love having Rex. He's one of the top ten companions right there. Then his dog. So after I finished this quest line, I was able to talk to Colonel Cassandra Moore, the real leader of the NCR. But since I already knew where Red Rock Canyon was, I just fast traveled and I had to help them seek employment, but that didn't work. So After confronting the great cons of trying to do whatever and make myself known, uh, I kind of failed their mission what are you and doing? had to slaughter every one of them. I, it's kind of sad. They said they're great at battle, but they lost to two people and a dog. That was like clubbing a baby seal. It made me so sad and disappointed that I had to do that. Just watch what I do. Like, this is kind of disappointing and sad. They go down quick, too. It's crazy. I also just found out the Omeritas have a quest line, which is crazy, because I know that was a thing. That's what I ended up doing. Um, I didn't even know there was, like, people here. So I was able to convince them to kill themselves, which is the most good fellas thing you could do for the most good fellas people you could actually meet in the game. I then found a shriveled up raisin hidden in a medical capsule. Oh. 
After letting House breathe the delicious radioactive oxygen, I couldn't put him away because he said it was dirty, so I just shot him and walked away and left. And then he told me to go to the pits of Tartarus tomorrow. Um, I thought I was going to get my uh, power suit training, but I guess I didn't get it because I wasn't good enough. So instead of getting that, I ended up just having them join the NCR. After all the work I did, I was then hired to become a CIA agent, and I was able to protect President Kim. After saving the president, I gave Rex the brain of a true king, but unfortunately I couldn't do nothing for Boone. He was just brain dead already. General idiot. Uh, General Lee Oliver oh, is kind hand. of mid, if I'm being honest. He just yaps at you for a little bit. I had to skip so much of this dialogue for you guys. After fighting my way through the depths of the Hoover Dam, destroying any and all Caesar's legion, I was able to make my way to Legate Lanius' camp. Instead of having the biggest cinematic fight, I chose to be a big baby and have a debate against him. So, to answer a question that you might have asked yourself at the beginning, it is entirely possible to be Fallout New Vegas, Still shot shotgun and still be idolized by the new California Republic. And as always, I hope you enjoyed it. Was forever changed. The new California Republic celebrated its second victory at Hoover Dam, establishing definitive control over the entire Mojave wasteland. Soon after, they negotiated terms to annex the Strip, Freeside, and many surrounding communities. The Mojave wasteland, at long last, had entirely fallen under the NCR's banner. The courier, fair and even-handed in his dealings throughout the wasteland, was honored by the NCR for his support of the military at Hoover Dam. He was presented with the Golden Branch, the highest civilian decoration given by the Republic. Black Mountain Radio continued to broadcast its peculiar form of propaganda. Raul Tejada faced his execution each day, though pardoned in the end. Travelers venturing too near Black Mountain continue to be harassed by Tabitha's followers. With the help of the Gunrunners, the Boomers developed a healthy trading relationship with the NCR. Eventually, the Boomers began wandering out into the wasteland, while still preventing outsiders from entering Nellis. The Brotherhood and the NCR in the Mojave Wasteland declared an official truce, despite continued hostilities between the two in the West. As per their agreement, the NCR handed over all suits of salvaged power armor, and in return, the Brotherhood helped patrol I-15 and 95. Their leaders destroyed by the courier. The fiends scattered throughout the wasteland. Without the organization of Motor Runner, Cook Cook, Violet, and Driver Nephi, they were easy prey. After the NCR's victory at the dam, the followers of the Apocalypse were pushed out of Old Mormon Fort during its occupation by NCR forces. NCR further encouraged them to leave Outer Vegas entirely, and the followers had no choice but to comply. Good Springs saw more trade along I-15 after NCR gained control of the Mojave Wasteland, but with that came a heavy burden of the Republic's taxes. Some old-timers, unable to handle the cost, were forced to move on, grumbling all the while. Rose of Sharon Cassidy died as her caravan died. In an unmarked grave, another victim of the Mojave. After generations of being beaten down, the great cons were finally broken by the courier. Those few who avoided the courier's wrath moved north into the wilderness of Idaho, where they tried once more to rebuild. With no cure for the Nightkin schizophrenia in sight, the disgruntled Nightkin left Jacobstown. Without a treatment, their insanity grew. The crazed nightkin terrorized the wasteland, and Jacobstown suffered repeated reprisals from mutant-hating humans. In the end, the surviving mutants abandoned Jacobstown entirely, its existence quickly forgotten by the rest of the wasteland. After the NCR victory at Hoover Dam, the temporary truce between them and the kings blossomed into a full-scale relief effort for the people. While the NCR made repeated entreaties that Freeside join the Republic, the King steadfastly maintained their independence. After Ray's brain was transplanted into Rex's cybernetic body, it took Rex some time to adjust to the old scrapyard dog's memories. Eventually, Rex's mind settled peacefully, melding his own memories with that of long travels with old Lady Gibson. After Hoover Dam, 
the leaderless powder gangers at the correctional facility vanished into the waste, leaving the prison empty. The correctional facility became another abandoned ruin in the wasteland, its carcass occasionally picked over by enterprising prospectors. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 powder gang tormented the Mojave wasteland for years. Citizens of the NCR were favorite targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. After Hoover Dam, NCR helps rebuild Prim as a major stopping point on the Long 15. Though Prim citizens chafe under NCR's taxes, they benefit greatly from the increased protection and merchant traffic. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. <laughs>